Hi everyone, it's Sharon. I want to give you a quick little demo here on how to do a fun beach scene. And I feel like I need to remind you guys the reason behind these videos, the reason behind these classes that I teach on Zoom. They aren't to create big works of art like this picture of Venice behind me. Um, it's It's not to be a pro or or it's not, the purpose isn't to sell this, whatever you make, it's not to be able to call yourself a seasoned artist. The whole point of everything that I do here is to teach you how to be kind to yourself during your creative process. It isn't easy, it still isn't easy for me, even though I paint every day. And I think it's important for you guys to see firsthand the struggles that an artist has no matter how long they've been an artist, there's always going to be self-doubt and wonder, but we are just used to that feeling where some of you out there might not be. So my goal is to teach you guys how to make really fun, laid back, easy paintings without, without judging yourself and um, expecting this amazing outcome because it's just about fun. It's just about being light and easy. Don't worry if your art doesn't look like mine. Just do you. Let's get started. So anyway, this is what we're working on today. We're gonna make this beautiful little Polaroid beach scene. I added a few things on my own and you can make yours how you want. But right now, uh, if you have a sheet of paper, watercolor paper, I cut mine to the dimension of about three and a half by four and a quarter. You can pause this video if you need to cut that up. I have some that I've pre-cut here. Let's see, I can't remember which was the front of my paper. I think the one that's a little more roughly textured is the correct side. So all I'm gonna do is not measure and make a little border that's similar to a Polaroid picture. And a Polaroid is thicker on the bottom. So just make sure when you draw your border here, you leave a little on the bottom. Just take a guess. All right. That's my blank canvas. These are so addicting, you guys. If, I, if, I, if it works out, I would like to make more than just one today, but we'll see how this goes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with some sunshine. I'm getting my yellow nice and wet. And I'm going to make my horizon line way up here. Paintings look better if they're not split perfectly down the middle. And I'm not even taping this, you guys. Usually I'll put tape along the border, but I'm pretty confident that I can stay in the lines. So I'm just going to do a real light wash of this yellow. Fill it all in, get it nice and watery. Probably should be using a bigger brush, but hey. <clears throat> then I'm going to take a little bit of a red. Red can get very vibrant, so I'm gonna make mine watery at first. And I'm gonna add a little bit of red in here, just sporadically, no thought into this, okay? Every sunset is different. So whatever you do, I promise you it has been a sunset that someone has seen in the past. I'm gonna go across the top here, make it nice and dark and bring it down, but I am going to avoid the center because that's where the sun is gonna be setting. And I love purple, so I'm gonna get some really deep purple, nice and inky on my brush a lot of color, and I'm gonna run it across the top and let the watercolor do its thing. And that means, since we're painting wet on wet, it's just gonna flow wherever it wants to flow. And I still think I want some more pink in there. Bring it in a little bit to start forming the general sunshine. Sunsets are my favorite. I don't know if it's because I'm a night person more than a morning person, 
or if it's because we have pine trees blocking our east view, so I really never see uh, sunrise, but I love, just love sunsets. Okay, I'm going to stop messing around with this and let that be. So I'm going to let this kind of sit and dry on its own, and then I'm going to paint the beach. So when we paint the beach, we're going to want to kind of go at an angle, okay? But So don't worry about being perfect here. Just find some shade of a brown and get a lot of water in it. You don't want it to be too dark. You also might not like the brown color, so I usually add a little bit of, let's see what I'm going to do. How about a little drop of a reddish color and it will make it a, a more attractive color, more tannish. And I might put a little yellow in there. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I trust that you're figuring out something over there. We want to get our shaky old man hand and we want to let go of the idea of making a perfectly straight line. And we're just going to just do anything and, you know, just let your brush shake it around. And I think I want my, my beach to be a little higher up. So I'm going to do this again. All right, fill it all in. You can fuss with the color if you want. Just have fun, feel the water. It's so easy. Watercolor is, it's just so light and airy and fun and non-threatening and graceful. I could go on and on, which is why I love watercolor. While it's still wet, dip your brush in a darker version of what you painted. I'm just dipping the tip of my brush in this brown and I'm gonna just touch the tip of it here. Real light to make a little bit of a shadow. I might go darker in a couple spots. So what we are creating now is the little shadow that happens when the water rolls onto the sand and kind of hovers over it before it pulls away. So don't go crazy making a huge shadow. It's it's not going to be that big and you don't even have to put it everywhere just some places at this point I'm gonna mute myself here and I'm gonna blow dry this because we need to get on to the next step and here we are we're ready for the next step now we're going to do the beautiful line where the water meets the sky so we're gonna go dark. If you have Payne's Gray, which is a super dark bluish black, that is the color I used. You can use black, you can make your own navy blue by mixing your blue with a lot of black. I'll let you work that part out and experiment. And I'm gonna lay down a nice dark line all the way across because it is the contrast of the dark against the light that makes this beautiful. I'm slowly gonna add more water to my brush and bring this down, rinse out my brush some more, bring it down, I'm gonna move some paint around. I'm gonna get rid of a lot of my color now and here's where you need to pay extra close attention. We're going to preserve some white on the paper. And that will give us the little bubbles that form. I'm sure there's some name for it, like the foam, I don't know. And I'm just gonna make little spots here all around this line where I'm not gonna touch everything. Just like that. Shaky old man hand. Don't try to be perfect. Now I'm going to bring the rest of this water down. Try to avoid a perfectly straight line. And there you go. This is a little thicker than I wanted it here. So I'm going to close up that gap a little bit. Oh, 
That's so beautiful. So I'm gonna go back in here with some very inky Payne's Gray. I'm saying inky, I-N-K-Y, not, not icky. <laughs> I just realized it probably sounds like that to you guys. Oh, there you go. That makes me so happy. You know you're doing the right thing in life when while you're doing it, it makes you this happy. I'm good with this. I'm gonna leave the sky the way it is. It's not as intense as my first sky, but as you will learn, there aren't any two paintings that we do where it's the same both times. It's like a little mystery and I love it that way. Uh, I like a little variation in my sand. It looks a little too perfect. So I'm going to do something I haven't done on the previous ones before, but I'm always up for trying. And I'm going to, I don't know, just make it not perfect. There. I don't know what I did. I just took a color that was a little darker and I made it less perfect. I'm going to dry this again and I'll come right back. Okay. It's looking a little flat to me. Something about it is too smooth. I think it's the water. So I'm going to add the illusion of some ripples in the water. I, I don't even know what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to do it, and then you guys will be able to, to see. Uh, my, it's almost like my hand knows, but I don't know. So there. Add a little, ooh, that's a little too dark. Let's add some water and smooth that out. There. Now it kind of looks like there's some depth in that water. And you know, I want to make the sky, I want to, I want to bump that up a little bit too. So I'm going to add some pink right there and maybe right there. And then I'm going to add some purple, maybe underneath it like that. Ooh, it's like clouds. That's what I was going for, but it turned out a little better than I thought. And that's why I want you guys to hear my self-doubt because I want you to know that this is normal. This self-doubt where you're not sure what it's going to look like, do it. Do it, do it. Always do it. You can redo another one if you need to. This is easy enough. Okay, a little purple under it. Maybe dilute it a little by dragging it down. See, what would have happened if I didn't have, if I didn't have the courage to try, right? With this first one that I did, I had no plans on putting this stick figure here or the sailboat or the birds, but I felt it calling to me, so I did it. So please entertain those thoughts in your head. And I think this is about done for me. I'll show you how I finish it up. Have a collection of my micron pens here so I'm gonna take maybe a number five now I'm gonna make this Polaroid come alive by just outlining it with the marker and make this line really stand out so fun. I might try another one. There you go. I am dedicating this painting to my friend Amy and I haven't decided what word I'm gonna write here but uh, it's a friend of mine who just came back from the beach and I'm thinking that she would love this whole video and this painting. So let's do another one. So this will be fun. I have no idea what this is going to be. And neither do you. There. Okay, I'm feeling a landscape. And I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I'm all about being brave. So I'm going to get a sky... I don't love that color. 
I'm going to add some purple for some interest. Drag it down. I'm going to make the sky big. And I might purposely miss some spots so that it looks like I have clouds. We'll see about that. We'll see. Maybe I'll cover it all up. I don't know. We just don't know. But what do we know, right? We think we have life figured out and then something happens like, I don't know, COVID, a diagnosis we don't wanna hear, something changes in our plans and we have no choice but to just go along with it. That's kind of what I'm doing here and what you're doing with your watercolor. Okay, uh, I'm gonna make Make the horizon line like this. And I'm gonna leave those white spots because they look like they could be clouds. And if you really wanna make them look more like clouds, you can take a tissue and pull some color off like that. There, voila. Okay. I'm not gonna dry this because I feel like having something be super unpredictable. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown mixed with a little bit of green. I feel bad that you guys don't see this while I'm working on colors, but hey, it's okay. Do your own thing. And I'm going to touch these places and let the watercolor just pull it up. It didn't go up here because uh, I used a Kleenex to blot it. I think that's all I'm gonna do right there. And then I'm gonna take my yellow and get it really pale. And I'm gonna try not to touch these trees that I just did, but if it touches a little bit, it's okay. But I'm gonna try to leave a space. And because it's off in the distance, that's why I start off with yellow, it's further away. And the darker I get, I'm gonna get, or the closer I get, I'm gonna get more green. And if you wanna make your green darker, here's a tip for you, add purple to it. And it gets darker, here I'll show you. Look at that. Well, that's neat. And it also adds some interest there, doesn't it? That's a cool looking little field. And I'm just going to fill this in, maybe add a little something here with some Payne's Gray so that it doesn't look too perfectly green. Can you tell I'm kind of anti-perfect? It's a goal I've been working on for a long time. I'm getting there. There! Ah, oh, that's so pretty! A little landscape. But I'm not done. I want to add a little... Mm, little pine trees and because they're gonna be really little I'm just gonna use my number six brush I think I'm gonna do green and Payne's gray and I'm gonna make a pine tree hmm, I'm gonna start at the bottom it's still wet so skipping a few spots and then when I get up here, I'm going to put the top of the tree. Ooh, I love it when a plan works out. Uh, maybe a little one here. Well, that's fun. Look at that. Just kind of zigzag back and forth. Cute, 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 cute. Um, I feel like something needs to be here. I don't know what. But there it is. And I'm going to add some brown because I don't like that this space right here has nothing. So I'm going to, I don't know what I'm doing, but I felt like it needed something right there. I just don't know what I'm doing. Um, I want to add a building, but I also don't know what I really want to do. Maybe that's it. Does that mean it's done? No, it doesn't feel done. There's a way too much sky up there. So let's 
Oh, let's say that there is a tree and the branches hang over here. Oh, that's way too green of a tree. I like dirty colors. I like dirty green and dirty blues. And so I'm just gonna make little clusters. It's like, no, I'm covering up the clouds that I like, but I have faith. I have faith that this might just turn out. And if it doesn't, you guys um, can talk about how awful it is when <laughs> when you're done with this video. Okay, I'm gonna add a little, I kinda want the tree to come off of here. I realize it's going to bleed into my wet paint, but I don't care. I don't care. I'm gonna add a few little branches. Might make this tree a little thicker. There you go. Ooh. Look at that. It's always a good idea to add some dark to the bottom of your tree clusters. Adds a little bit of depth. <clears throat> okay. What do you think? How's it going for you guys? I know it seems like I'm going really fast, but I encourage you to go fast because the less time you have to think, Sometimes the, the better the painting is. Mm, something's bothering me and I don't know what it is. Let me dry it and see what I think. While I was drying, I know what I think. I want my, my little pine trees kind of got lost. So now I got to make them again. There. How dare it go away like that? Bring this tree down. Remember, don't make the tree straight across at the bottom because chances are there's grass growing around it. Okay, so this isn't my favorite little landscape. What does it need? Uh, let's see, it needs a path. that maybe maybe let's see if I can outline it a little better make it look like there's some grass growing around the path I don't know maybe there's some path marks see how it's fun to just look around and think what what can I do I'm blurring these a little bit with some yellow. Probably shouldn't have done that. I usually say don't ever add yellow at the end. It's kind of like you can't just expect this painting to turn out great by slapping a happy yellow on it. Kind of like life. Like you can't just you can't just take happiness and throw it around and suddenly it makes everything better. But here I am doing just that. <laughs> Okay, well the point, you know, the point is have fun. Just have fun. And that's all. Until next time, I hope you keep creating. Make more of these. Do, have fun. Create, don't worry about the outcome. Just have fun and send them in a card to a friend. Keep creating. Bye guys.